Modern biochemistry has also revealed the unimaginably complex design of the DNA molecule. The structure of the DNA molecule was discovered by two scientists, James Watson and Francis Crick, in 1955. Their discovery demonstrated that life was much more complex than anyone had previously envisioned. Himself a confirmed evolutionist, Francis Crick, who received a Nobel Prize for this discovery, came to confess that a structure like DNA could never have emerged by chance. Professor Anthony Flew of England and Reading University is the world's foremost academic atheist over the last 50 years and the author of more than 30 books. His first debate with former atheist turned Christian, C.S. Lewis in 1950 in Oxford, England, was the first time he advanced his argument for atheism. He later wrote a paper titled Theology and Falsification. The paper became the most widely reprinted philosophical publication of the last half century and a key foundation for atheists and agnostics who advanced materialist evolutionism. But now it is the advancement of science itself that has changed the mind of Flu and some scientists. At a recent summit at New York University, Flu changed his position and now believes in God as the creator of the universe. Flu turns to various discoveries of science to prove his point. But it is the manifestation of life written in DNA and the transcription of DNA to RNA and RNA into protein and the subsequent process of protein folding that makes the best case for flu. Uh, what, what I think that the DNA material has done has shown by its almost unbelievable complexity of the arrangements which uh, lead to produce uh, this being uh, that uh, intelligence must have been involved in uh, getting these extraordinarily diverse elements um, uh, to work together. When you look at RNA, you, as, an, as a chemist, you just, you, you're, you're in sort of astonishment, really, at just what a wonderful molecule it is. It's complex, it's a really beautiful structure. And you inevitably wonder, how on earth did that structure arise? How on earth did chemistry produce it? RNA's structure looks simple but looks can deceive. Each building block is actually made of two parts, a sugar molecule and a nuclear base. Chemists found they could make the nuclear bases. And so when they then realized they could actually make the sugars, they just thought we must be able to join them together. And so they tried for many years. But the problem was chemically, you just can't join them together. Of course, such an amazing structure could never have been formed by chance. The theory of evolution, which sees life as the result of mere coincidences and haphazard happenings, is helpless to explain anything in the face of the incredible complexity of DNA. Some evolutionists say that our DNA is about 98% similar to that of apes, and that this difference is only a few spelling mistakes. Others say a more accurate figure is no more than 95%. But considering that humans have 3 billion letters worth of DNA information in each cell, even a 2% difference is actually 60 million spelling errors. Of course, this is not error, but 20 500 page books worth of new information. A common designer is a much better explanation for the similarities in human and ape DNA. As an architect uses the same building materials for different buildings, we shouldn't be surprised if God used similar design features in many different creatures. After all, we do share about 50% of our DNA with bananas, but that doesn't mean we're half banana. Every detail of a living being's physical and physiological makeup is coded in this double helix. All the information about our bodies from the color of our eyes to the structure of our internal organs and the shape and function of our cells are programmed in sections called genes in the DNA. The DNA code is made up of the sequence of four different bases. If we think of each one of these bases as a letter, DNA can be likened to a data bank made up of an alphabet of four letters. All the information about a living thing is stored in this data bank. 
If you found an ancient clay tablet with strange characters washed up on the shore, you couldn't read it. Unless someone had cracked the code. But you'd still know the letters represented a language, even if you didn't know anything else about the author or his civilization. Language is recognizable, even if you can't read it. Take Morse code. It has three basic parts, dots, dashes, and spaces. These three simple parts are combined to represent letters. There are 26 letters in the English language, which are combined to form over 400,000 words. Those words can, of course, be combined into an infinite number of sequences or sentences. There is evidence that DNA represents a language. Four basic units, called nucleotides, combine into a code for 20 amino acids. From those few amino acids, the body forms more than 100,000 proteins. Even if you can't read DNA, it still has all the hallmarks of language. A language that biologists are just now beginning to crack. Every tiny cell in our body is packed with three feet of DNA, three billion nucleotides. The similarity between DNA and human language is uncanny. In addition to codes, both use similar techniques to pack, access, rearrange, copy, and translate information. DNA seems to represent a language, the language of life. An unseen author, the creator of heaven and earth, has left a testimony of his existence in the DNA of every living thing. The information that is stored in, in the DNA molecule is pointing back to, an, to a designing intelligence. Now, why do I say that? Um, it has to do with what we know about the cause and effect structure of the world. Uh, our, our local hero in Seattle, uh, Bill Gates, says the DNA is like a software program, only much more complex than any we've ever created. And that's a very suggestive remark because we know that programs always come from programmers. And in fact, we know generally that information, whether it's in a computer program or a hieroglyphic inscription or in a headline in a newspaper or uh, a block of text in a book, Information always comes from an intelligent source. So yes. when we find information in the DNA molecule, the most logical thing to conclude is that it too had an intelligent source. An intelligent source.